Hello my dear boys and girls, welcome to your science class. So last class we have started our 11th chapter. We have completed one topic that is about the light. And today we are going to learn about shadow and reflection. Hey children, now you are very much aware about the light, the properties of light and the sources of light. We have also learned how we can divide different objects based on whether the object passes light through it. So there are three type of materials, three type of division that is transparent materials, transcoolant materials and oblique materials. And we have also learned a property of light that is light passes through a straight line. Whichever be the condition, the light rays passes through a straight line. Whichever be the source, the light ray passes through the through a straight line. In today's class, we are going to learn about shadow. We are going to learn about shadow. Now, I'm sure that all of you have seen the shadows, isn't it? So you tell me what are the properties of these shadows? Okay, what is the color of a shadow? Yes, a shadow has a dark color or a black color, isn't it? So a shadow can be defined as a dark patch or shade formed behind an oblique object. And shadows are formed when an object blocks the path of light, isn't it? So what are shadows? Shadows are the dark patches or shades formed behind an oblique object when it is when it blocks path of light coming through the source of light. So for example teacher will draw here that is we have a candle here. Suppose we have a candle here candle. Now so this candle will act as a source of source of light isn't it the candle will provide light these are light rays okay so these are light rays candle act as a source of light now what happens is a cardboard is placed here a cardboard what is the nature of cardboard what type of is uh, what type of material is this cardboard Yes, the cardboard is an oblique material, isn't it? That means it will not pass light through it, isn't it? So, here is a cardboard. Now, what will happening here is the light rays from the candle is getting blocked with an oblique material, that is cardboard here. So, what will happen? A few light rays are getting blocked with this oblique objects. So, what happens? The other rays will be going in straight, straight way itself. And if we keep a screen here, what will happen is the other rays will pass through this region. The region where the cardboard is placed will reflect a shadow on this screen. Isn't it? So this is the condition when shadow is formed. So dear children, can you tell me which are the conditions needed for the formation of this shadows? Yes, there are mainly three conditions. The first condition is for shadow to form. The first condition is it should need a source of light. Here the source of light is a candle. Now, the second condition is an oblique material should be there in order to block the light rays. So here the oblique materials is a cardboard, isn't it? Now, the third condition is there should be a screen in between. There should be an oblique screen behind the oblique materials. Then only the, if the screen is present, then only the shadow will be viewable. The shadow will be formed, isn't it? So, we need a light source. We need an oblique materials to block the light source. And also, we need a screen. So, these are the three conditions needed for the formation of the shadow. Hey children, there is two activities given in your textbook, page number 106. Activity 3 is to show that the so is to show that a source of light is needed for the formation of the shadow. Activity 4 is to show the formation of shadow there must be an oblique surface to receive the shadow of oblique object. It is now learned that there should be an oblique screen in order to receive the shadow of an oblique material, isn't it? So, activity force proves that. So, teacher will demonstrate this activities using the DG video. Watch the experiment carefully. Activity 4. To show that an opaque object is needed to form a shadow. Things needed. Book, torch, table. Method. 
shine a torch on a table. Can you see a shadow? No. Now place a book between the torch and the table. Now we can see a shadow. Since the book is an opaque object, it will stop light from passing through it. If we place butter paper, translucent object, in place of the book, we get a weak shadow behind it. A transparent object does not stop any light from passing through it. Conclusion Therefore, the second essential condition needed for a shadow to be formed is the presence of an opaque object in the path of light. Activity 5 To show that for the formation of a shadow, there must be an opaque screen to receive the shadow of an opaque object. Things needed A torch and a piece of cardboard. Method. This activity should be carried out at night with some of your friends. Ask one of your friends to stand in the dark. Can you see your friend's shadow? No, because a source of light is needed for a shadow to be formed. Hold the torch close to the ground and shine it on the face of your friend standing in the dark. We will notice that no shadow is formed in spite of the fact that there is a source of light, torch as well as an opaque body. A shadow is formed but we cannot see it because there is no screen for the shadow to fall on. Now ask another friend of yours to hold the cardboard behind the head of your friend. Now you will see the shadow. So we can say that a shadow can be seen only if it falls on something solid. An opaque substance that receives shadow is called a screen. The screen could be a wall, the ground, the ceiling, or a table. Conclusion Therefore, the third essential condition needed for the formation of a shadow is that there must be an opaque screen to receive the shadow of an opaque object in the path of light. Activity 6 To show that shadow is dark outline of an object. Things needed Torch Method Take a torch and cover the front of it with a piece of green colored cellophane. The torch now emits green colored light. Place a multicolored cube on the table. Shine the torch on the multicolored cube. The shadow is dark. Now, cover the front part of the torch with dark red black colored cellophane and shine the torch on a yellow ball. The shadow is again dark. Observation. So, the color of a shadow does not change with the change in color of the source of the light or the color of the opaque object placed in the path of the light. Conclusion A shadow is a dark outline of an object. Other than its shape, no details of the object can be seen on the shadow. Children, by this activities, we learned the properties of the shadow, the conditions in which the shadow is formed. The first one is there should be a there should be a light source for the formation of the shadow. By the fourth activity we learned, there should be a screen. An oblique screen should be there in order to the, for receiving the shadow of this oblique material. Those were the conditions for the formation of the shadow. Now what we are going to learn is about the characteristics of the shadow. So dear children, can you tell me a few characteristics of the shadow that was formed? Which will be the color of the shadow? Yes, a shadow will have, always will have a dark color, isn't it? So, the first character of the shadow is, it will have a dark color. That is, first characteristic, shadow will be always dark. Always dark. The shadow, the, the color of the shadow will be always dark. That is, whichever be the source of light, whichever be the object, whichever be the color of the source of light, the shadow will be formed, will, will be, the, the shadow form will be always having a dark color. Now, the second property, the shadow is the outline of an object, of an oblique object, isn't it? Whichever be the object placed in between the light source and the screen, the, that, object's outline, that object's outline will be formed as shadow on the oblique screen, isn't it? Shows a dark outline of an object. So, the shadow shows, shows a dark outline, shows 
a dark outline a dark outline so that is the second character that whichever be the object placed in between the light source and the screen that object's outline will be shown as shadow the third property of the shadow is where will be the shadow formed yes the shadow will be formed outside the the shadow will be formed opposite to the light source isn't it the shadow will be formed opposite to the light source light source isn't it so that is the third point that is will be formed form direct opposite direct direct opposite opposite to the light source to the light source yes the shadows will be formed direct opposite to the source isn't it so that is the third point the shadow will be formed direct opposite to the light source now the fourth point is the size of the shadow varies depending upon the distance between the source of light so that is the fourth point that is the size of the shadow varies with respect to the distance between distance between the object and the light source so that is the fourth point size of shadow size depends on size depends on distance between distance between source of light source of light and object and object so the size depends on the distance between the source of light and the object so you may have observed your shadows when you stand near when you stand below the sunlight isn't it so there you can see the position of the shadow also varies as per the sunlight as per the direction of the sunlight or the source of light isn't it so that is what the fourth point is so these are the characters the basic characters of the shadow formed so the first character was it always the shadow always has a dark color whichever be the color of the source of light the shadow will have a dark color now the second point is it shows a dark outline of the oblique object isn't it the shadows are the dark outline of the ob uh, of the oblique object now the third point is it's formed direct opposite to the source of light it is formed direct opposite to the source of light so where you are placing the light just opposite to that on screen you can see the shadow now now the fourth point is the size of the shadow depends on distance between the source of light and the object so the size also varies the size also the size of the shadow also varies so there are few experiments in your textbook uh, page number 107 and 108 and this is to prove these characters the so activity 5 is to show that the shadows the first property that is the shadow is always dark color and activity 6 is to prove that uh, to show the size of the shadow depends on the distance between the source of light and the object so this two activities teacher will demonstrate by the end of this class when we summarize the points using the dg video so till now we learned what, what are the conditions essential in order to uh, in order to the formation of the shadows and also we learned about the characteristics of the shadow now we are going to learn instrument which works on the properties we learned in this chapter and this instrument is called a pinhole camera so this instrument that is pinhole camera works on the principle that is a light ray travels in a straight line so we learned that principle in last class this pinhole camera is an instrument or it is an is an instrument which works on the principle that the light rays travel in a straight line so this is a simplest form of camera this is a simplest form of viewing images using the property of light in your textbook page number 109 the method is given how to make the spin hole camera that is using a shoe box and a screen so for that what we need is a shoe box a screen and a source of light here the uh, here the here the candle is taken as uh, here the candle is taken as the source of light 
So teacher will demonstrate the method of how to make this pinhole camera using the DG video. So kindly watch this carefully. Pinhole camera. We can see the images of different objects using a pinhole camera. It is based on the principle that light travels in a straight line. Let us construct a pinhole camera. Materials required. A medium sized cardboard box. A translucent ground glass or waxed paper. A needle. A pair of scissors. An adhesive tape. Black paint or color. A candle. A matchbox and a brush. Method. Take a medium sized cardboard box. A shoe box can also be used. And blacken the inside of the box with black paint or color. With the help of a needle, make a tiny hole or pinhole on one side of the cardboard box. Cut out a rectangular portion of the side of the cardboard box opposite to the one on which the pinhole was made. Cover this rectangular hole with ground glass or a butter paper sheet. Stick the paper sheet with adhesive tape. This paper sheet serves as a screen. Our pinhole camera is now ready to see images. Place a candle on a table and light it with a matchstick. Place the pinhole camera a few inches away from the lighted candle with the side having the pinhole facing the candle. Move the pinhole camera forward and backward so that a clear image of the candle flame is obtained on the screen. The image form is colored. The image formed by the pinhole camera is inverted upside down. This is because light travels in a straight line. A light ray from the top of the candle flame A falls on the screen at A dash. After passing through the pinhole H, a ray from the bottom B falls at B dash. Similarly, rays of light from each point on the candle flame fall on the screen after passing through the pinhole. Together, these rays of light make up the image B dash A dash. So dear children, this is how a pinhole camera is used. And this can be used in order to view the images in inverted position. The images formed in the screen will be on inverted position. Now, what are the uses of this pinhole camera? So, the pinhole cameras are having three uses. The first use is they can be used in order to view uh, the large buildings as well as large uh, trees which are a distant away. They can be used in order to view the trees and buildings which are a bit distance away. Now the second use, they are used in vehicles when people are moving in sunlight. When the vehicle is moving, the cars etc are moving in sunlight. Sometimes the driver will have difficulty to look into the sunlight. So in such conditions, these pinhole cameras are used. The using pinhole camera is more comfortable for the drivers. So that is the second use. Now the third use of pinhole camera is they are used in order to view the solar eclipse. During solar eclipse you may have heard that it is not safe to watch the solar eclipse directly with our naked eyes. So in such conditions this pinhole cameras can be used in order to view the solar eclipse. You can view the solar eclipse using the pinhole cameras. So these are the three uses of this pinhole cameras. Now, now pinhole cameras can be seen in nature also. So dear children that's all about the pinhole cameras. Now we are going to learn our next topic of this chapter that is reflection. Reflection. Very familiar with this word reflection. We make use of this property that is reflection in our daily life, isn't it? While getting ready to school and all, when we look into the mirror, you can see you are on reflection. This is reflection, dear children. It's the phenomenon of sending back the, the light rays which falls on an object is what we call a reflection. So if I demonstrate the diagram of uh, reflection, I can demonstrate it like suppose this is a suppose this is a surface of an object object this will be the smooth surface of an object now what happens is light rays will be falling onto this 
So, if the surface show the property of reflection, the, la the light ray will be reflected back, isn't it? So, this is how you, uh, so this is how you represent the reflection. That is, the light rays are falling on the surface. The surface will reflect back those, uh, those uh, light rays. So, this property is what we call the reflection. So, the objects will show the property of reflection based on depending upon the nature of the object. So, if you use a mirror, the reflection will be formed. Whereas, if you use a cardboard, the reflection will not be formed, isn't it? Reflection of the light depends upon the nature of the materials we use. Now, there are a few activities in your textbook that is activity, uh, activity 7 and 8. Activity 7 shows the polished shiny surfaces like mirror, reflect the light better. The, they, they reflect the light. And activity 8 shows the reflection of light by a plane mirror. So, this activity you can watch in the summarizing video. Oh, now, in page number 111, the difference between the image and the shadow of an object is given. So, we have already learned the, uh, we, we have already learned the characteristics of the Shadows formed, isn't it? Here is a comparison between that. So the image formed in a mirror and the shadow formed is compared here. So here you can see the parameters like color. Color is given. The first thing is color. The now the color of the image will be. So we know the color of the image formed by the reflection uh, when you look into the mirror is the same, isn't it? Whereas the color of the shadow, we, ha we have already learned it is having a dark color, isn't it? Now, the second property is details. So when we see the objects in a mirror, the detail, it will be well in detail, isn't it? Size, shape, color, etc. will be the exact of the object. Whereas, when you observe a shadow, the shadow will only have the outline, outline of the object, isn't it? So, the details also varies between the image and the shadow formed. Now, the lateral inversion. So, when you see an object in a mirror, there is, there is a property called lateral inversion. Lateral inversion. So, this lateral inversion of the image means the image formed in the screen will be the inverted form. Whereas, when you see a shadow, the image does not show any lateral inversion. The image will be the exact outline of the object. So, when you see an object, when you see a reflected object, it shows a lateral inversion. Whereas, the shadow does not show any lateral inversion. Now, the formation. Formation of the image. How is the image formed? The image is formed. The light ray from the image directly enters to our eyes isn't it whereas the shadow is formed when the oblique when an oblique object blocks the light rays isn't it so that is how the formation of the image and the shadows happens so that now the size of the shadow and the image the size of the image will be same as the size of the object whereas the size of the shadow may varies depending upon the distance between we learned we learned it we already learned it that is it depends upon the distance between the source of light and the screen is, uh, and the object isn't it so so the size of the shadow may varies now in page number 112 the 11.20 shows the formation of image using a plane mirror and formation of the shadow isn't it so so this clearly shows how a shadow is formed and how an image is formed isn't it so kindly go through that carefully because it shows the formage of image as well as the formage of formation of uh, shadow which we discussed just now. So dear children, by this we are concluding today's class. By this we have come to an end of this chapter, light, shadow and reflection. So this is a simple chapter with few concepts which we know already. Dear children, by next class, we will start the textual activities of this chapter. Now let's summarize what we have learned in today's class using the DG video. So while summarizing, you can see the activities which we discussed. So kindly watch them carefully and, and understand the concepts. Shadows. Shine a torch on a table. Now, place a book between the torch and the table. What do you notice? 
Since the book is an opaque object, it will stop the light from passing through it. A shade, dark area, will therefore appear on the table behind the book. This is the shadow of the book. A shadow is a dark space, shade, formed behind an opaque object when it blocks light from any source of light. Conditions essential for the formation of a shadow. Activity 3. To show that a source of light is needed to form a shadow. Things needed. Book. Source of light. Method. Take a book, an opaque object, to a dark room. Can you see the shadow of the book? No, you cannot see a shadow in the dark. Switch on the bus. You will now see the shadow of the book on the ground. There has to be a source of light for a shadow to form. Conclusion. Therefore, a source of light is needed for a shadow to be formed. Activity 4. To show that an opaque object is needed to form a shadow. Things needed. Book, torch, table. Method. Shine a torch on a table. Can you see a shadow? No. Now place a book between the torch and the table. Now we can see a shadow. Since the book is an opaque object, it will stop light from passing through it. If we place butter paper, translucent object, in place of the book, we get a weak shadow behind it. A transparent object does not stop any light from passing through it. Conclusion Therefore, the second essential condition needed for a shadow to be formed is the presence of an opaque object in the path of light. Activity 5 to show that for the formation of a shadow, there must be an opaque screen to receive the shadow of an opaque object. Things needed. A torch and a piece of cardboard. Method. This activity should be carried out at night with some of your friends. Ask one of your friends to stand in the dark. Can you see your friend's shadow? No, because a source of light is needed for a shadow to be formed. Hold the torch close to the ground and shine it on the face of your friend standing in the dark. We will notice that no shadow is formed in spite of the fact that there is a source of light, torch, as well as an opaque body. A shadow is formed but we cannot see it because there is no screen for the shadow to fall on. Now ask another friend of yours to hold the cardboard behind the head of your friend. Now you will see the shadow. So we can say that a shadow can be seen only if it falls on something solid. An opaque substance that receives shadow is called a screen. The screen could be a wall, the ground, the ceiling or a table. Conclusion. Therefore, the third essential condition needed for the formation of a shadow is that there must be an opaque screen to receive the shadow of an opaque object in the path of light. Activity 6 To show that shadow is dark outline of an object. Things needed. Torch. Method. Take a torch and cover the front of it with a piece of green colored cellophane. The torch now emits green colored light. Place a multicolored cube on the table. Shine the torch on the multicolored cube. The shadow is dark. Now, cover the front part of the torch with dark red-black colored cellophane and shine the torch on a yellow ball. The shadow is again dark. Observation. So, the color of a shadow does not change with the change in color of the source of the light or the color of the opaque object placed in the path of the light. Conclusion. A shadow is a dark outline of an object. Other than its shape, no details of the object can be seen on the shadow. Activity 7. To show that the size of shadow depends on the distance between source of light and the opaque object. Things needed. Table lamp. Method. This activity should be carried out at night in a closed room with one of your friends. Switch on the table lamp and place it on a table. Ask your friend to stand against a wall. You will see the shadow of your friend on the wall 
acting as a screen. Now, ask your friend to come closer to the table lamp. What do you see? The size of the shadow becomes larger when your friend, a pink object, comes closer to the source of light. We can also say that the size of the shadow becomes larger when an opaque object moves away from the screen. Conclusion So we can conclude that the size of a shadow on the screen changes with the distance between the source of light and the opaque object. As the distance between the source of light and the object decreases, the shadow on the screen becomes larger and vice versa. The size of a shadow on a screen changes with the distance between the opaque object and the screen. As the distance between the object and the screen increases, the shadow on the screen becomes larger and vice versa. Pinhole Camera We can see the images of different objects using a pinhole camera. It is based on the principle that light travels in a straight line. Let us construct a pinhole camera. Materials required A medium-sized cardboard box A translucent ground glass or waxed paper A needle A pair of scissors An adhesive tape Black paint or color A candle A matchbox and a brush Method Take a medium-sized cardboard box A shoe box can also be used and blacken the inside of the box with black paint or color. With the help of a needle, make a tiny hole or pinhole on one side of the cardboard box. Cut out a rectangular portion of the side of the cardboard box opposite to the one on which the pinhole was made. Cover this rectangular hole with ground glass or a butter paper sheet. Stick the paper sheet with adhesive tape. This paper sheet serves as a screen. Our pinhole camera is now ready to see images. Place a candle on a table and light it with a matchstick. Place the pinhole camera a few inches away from the lighted candle with the side having the pinhole facing the candle. Move the pinhole camera forward and backward so that a clear image of the candle flame is obtained on the screen. The image form is colored. The image formed by the pinhole camera is inverted upside down. This is because light travels in a straight line. A light ray from the top of the candle flame A falls on the screen at A dash. After passing through the pinhole H, a ray from the bottom B falls at B dash. Similarly, rays of light from each point on the candle flame fall on the screen after passing through the pinhole. Together, these rays of light make up the image B-A-. dash dash. When we throw a tennis ball at a wall, then the ball bounces back. This means that when the tennis ball strikes the wall, the wall sends it back. Similarly, when lights fall on the surface of an object, the object sends the light back. The process of sending back the light rays which fall on the surface of an object is called reflection of light. Activity 8. To show that shiny polished surfaces like mirrors reflect light better than other surfaces. Things needed. Torch, a plain mirror, book. Method. You need two or more friends and a dark room to do this activity. Ask one of your friends to hold a mirror in his or her hands, one corner of the room. Ask the other friend to stand in the other corner of the room. You stand in another corner with a torch in your hand. Cover the glass of the torch with your fingers and switch it on. Adjust your fingers with a small gap between them so that you can get a beam of light. Direct the beam onto the mirror that your friend is holding. Observe a beam of light on the other side. Adjust the direction of the mirror so that the beam of light falls on another friend standing in the dark room. We now do the same activity using a book instead of a mirror. 
we cannot see the reflected beam of light. Conclusion The beam of light after striking the mirror is reflected from the mirror. Shiny well polished surfaces like mirrors reflect light well. Dull surfaces like a book do not reflect the light as well as a mirror. Activity 9 To show the reflection of light by a plain mirror. Things needed Torch Plastic comb Large thermocol Fevicol or quick fix Dark colored mirror Method Take a plastic fix and mirror by pressing in one of the thermocol sheet in inclined position. Observation We observe that the light passing through the comb is in straight lines. The light reflected by the mirror is also in straight lines, showing a similar pattern. Conclusion The light is reflected by a plain mirror. So dear children, by this we are concluding this class. Next class onwards we will start the textual activities of this 11th chapter, Light, Shadow and Reflection. See you in next class. Thank you.